unconventionally lovely, but everyone said the reason she couldn't find a boyfriend was the goddess of love herself. Aphrodite could not risk her falling in love. But that did not stop people talking. But Psyche here was actually the love child of Aphrodite and Aphrodite's wrinkly old father. And that made Aphrodite wild. Oh my god, have they seen her father? What are they thinking of? That's just ridiculous. They must have forgotten what I look like, these idiots. And so it was, she called upon her beautiful son, Cupid. And Cupid flew down with his bow and arrow, meaning to catch Psyche. But he was confused by her beauty. And his arrow slipped and went right through his heart. And from that moment, he loved Psyche with a passion. And all Aphrodite said was, You idiot! I don't believe it! Your arrow pierced your own heart? I'm sorry, Mum. And she sent him away. Get out of here. But Cupid could not forget Psyche. And Psyche could still find no lover. For Cupid would not allow her fall in love with anyone else. And so it was, her father did, what Greek fathers do at that point. He banished her, forcing her to go up to Mount Kithara, telling her, I want to see you never again, for you cannot do what daughters must do. You cannot get married. And so poor old Psyche went up to the top of the mountain, and there was the god of love, Cupid, waiting for her. And Cupid kidnapped her and took her to his magical land, where she lived alone, served by day, by animals that could talk. And at night, Cupid would come to her, and she would know he was coming by the smell. For she was not allowed to kindle light, for fear the god of love, the goddess of love, would see them in the bright light. And Psyche learned to love his twelve's coming, although at first she feared it. But she grew lonely, and so she asked, she asked that her sisters might come, and against his better judgment, Cupid sent them. And his sisters were so wildly jealous, they said to Psyche, How do you know? How do you know your man is no monster? If you've never seen him, he might be a dragon. Who knows who comes in the night in the dark? Who knows? And they gave Psyche a candle. And so upon the night they left, Psyche turned the candle full on Cupid. And Cupid was revealed in his naked glory. And as Psyche saw him. Cupid's mother saw Psyche. And she burnt Cupid up. And Psyche found herself back in the castle of her father. But her father made her into a servant. And she worked as her servant. While her sisters, her sisters thought, My, my, there are lovers to be found on Mount Kithara. Better than lovers we know. And so in quiet, they kept up the mountain. And so in storm the four furies took them and devoured their soul. And poor Psyche was set upon the ways of the world. And she wandered. And she did what any priestess could do at those times. She went to the nearest temple, the temple of Ceres. But she came into that temple and the priestesses said, We cannot, we cannot feed ourselves any longer. All the grain stores have gone. And they said that there must be a monster dwelling down, down there in the grain stores, for all the grain was gone. But if you can find out what it is, the problem, and help us, we will be so grateful. And so it was that Psyche went down, and she saw there was a great nest of ants. And she moved the ants and put them outside the temple. And then Ceres, the great goddess, appeared to her and said, Oh my child. You have helped my priestesses. I am so grateful to you. But I, I cannot help you. Only in the smaller matters, in the big thing which you are concerned about, you must go to another god of help. And so it was. The poor Psyche went to the great temple of Hera, goddess of heaven. And when she came into that temple, again the priestesses said, Oh, there is terrible trouble here. We are so old now. We have recruited no young acolytes. 
and our voices have grown so old and cracked that we can no longer sing the hymns of the goddess. But Psyche had noticed there were rushes growing by the temple, and she thrashed them and she forged those rushes into pine pipes. And the pan pipes played to the goddess, and the goddess came down, but even she said, Oh, my child, I am so grateful, and I would help you if I could, and will in small ways. But the trouble that you are under, you will have to go to a higher authority than I, I cannot help you. And so she sent Psyche to Aphrodite's temple. And when Aphrodite saw her, Aphrodite laughed and laughed and said, <laughs> Uh, and Psyche said, I've been told I must serve you for three boons. And Aphrodite sat and gloated for a while. But if truth be said, it had been quite a night before, up there on High Olympus. And suddenly she felt queasy. And she threw up all over Psyche. And then waiting to hide her shame, she said. Oh, well, to begin with, you can clear that but then she added, to make it look like a special, difficult quest. Oh, but I'm only going to give you an hour. But just at that moment, out came the ants whose lives Psyche had saved and said, We will, we will, we will, we will, we will help you. And they cleaned the grains up in full hour. And when Aphrodite turned up, she was slivered. But she could do nothing. And there was one of the wishes gone. Damn. And she said, meaning to say something useful, but deadly. Oh, now you look at you, my hair seems to have lost its luster. You can go and find me some stuff for a new wig, I know, yeah. And she sent Psyche to sail across the sky, across the river of the sky, right to the other side, where the great god Phoebus took his sheep to graze, and their wool was burning bright, so bright no mortal could touch it. And she meant that Psyche would be consumed. But Psyche went to the river of the sky, and there were rushes. And as she watched, the rushes knitted themselves into a boat, and Psyche flew across the sky. And when she came to the other side, she saw a dark thorn tree. And in that dark tree, to a thorn tree, the sheep of the wool, the wool of the sheep, caught and held and cooled and Psyche picked that wool and made it into a wig and gave it to Aphrodite and when Aphrodite saw it she said oh thank you kiddo and now that I've got this fabulous new hair I realize I realize there's something amiss with my skin I need some skin cream well I usually bathe in the blood of virgins I don't know if it does any good but it sure makes me feel better you know what I mean but um yeah I'm going to ask you to get some for me. And she sent Psyche down, down, down to gather the water from the holy sticks that lies at the root of being, beyond the root of time, beyond memory. And Psyche knew she was being sent to her death, but she felt something in the air. And she remembered, she remembered what Hera had told her, that sooner or later, Cupid would waken, but would be powerless. And she seemed to hear a voice that told her to climb a high tower. And she stood upon the tower in the moonlight. And out from the moonlight, someone stepped. Just a... With horns like moon and a necklace. And said, I am Diana. And Diana whispered. And the goddess of the moon summoned up an eagle from her father. And the pair of them jumped upon the eagle's back, and they rolled down, 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 beyond darkness, beyond time, beyond being, beyond sanity. And there were the giants, all in fury, and came and leapt, and while Diana fast shot arrows at them to slow them down, Psyche gathered the water from the sticks, and they flew back to Aphrodite. And when Aphrodite was given the water, and they rubbed it into her skin, she grew young and beautiful, but still lacked that certain je ne sais quoi. And she said, Well, now I look pretty good, but do you think you realize what I've really lost is my, my allure, you know, my unique je ne sais quoi. Mm. I think I might know where it went. But this is going to get it for me. And Psyche, although this was one request too many, knew she had no choice. But where could she go? And 
So it was Aphrodite sent her down into the underworld. And Psyche, again despaired, went up to the tower. But as she came up to the tower, someone was waiting for her, saying, I've been given payment. It was Sharon, the ferryman of the gods. And Sharon took her down, down, down to Persephone's temple. And when Psyche explained her mission to Persephone, Persephone just laughed and said, Ha 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 ha, her and her allure. I've got no use for it. She's a wastrel. And every time she gets drunk and throws up on someone, her beauty comes down here. I've kept it in a box. I have all of Aphrodite's dark beauty in this box. You can take it if you like, but don't open it. Because Aphrodite's dark beauty is her own concern. You cannot open the box! And Psyche took the box. And she started to make the journey back to Sharon. But maybe Sharon had been bribed. He would never say, then or now. But suddenly he was gone, saying only, the way is now up. You can crawl if you like, but it's utterly dark and you're full of despair. Perhaps there's light in that box. And so it was. Psyche tried and tried and tried. She tried and tried and tried to clamber and clamber and clamber and clamber and clamber and clamber and clamber her way back up. But do you think she could? Every time she did, without the light, she tumbled down and down. And in the end, in despair, she reached and opened the box. And suddenly all oh, Aphrodite's dark beauty burned her up. But seeing that from heaven, Cupid realized his love had been consumed. And that made him free. And he flew down and gathered what he could of her spirit, of her soul, in a net made by his foster father, Hesperus. A net made for Aphrodite's true hair. And he gathered it and took it to heaven. And in heaven, Zeus said, I've had enough of you warring goddesses. I know what we're going to do. And he called upon the character over there. He called upon Hesperus. And Hesperus made a statue. A statue of unsurpassed beauty wrought of marble. Wrought of love. And Zeus had Cupid blow the soul into the statue. And its eyes opened. And then Zeus turned to Aphrodite and said, Now, Aphrodite, behave yourself. Meet your new daughter. And all Aphrodite could think of saying was, Oh, well, I guess you've been kind of useful in another life. You might even have been my serving mate, I guess. Now she is your daughter, said Zeus. Welcome her, Aphrodite. Oh, welcome to the gods, kiddo. Welcome to the gods. And so it was, from this day to that, Psyche, the mind, and love dwell together in heaven. Thank you. So we're still playing with us in a variety of forms, but that will finish us up for today time. And we have been Widsit and Dior, and this has been, once again, the Widsit and Dior stage, and we've been the Equality stage this year. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And please do like us on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.